appreciate you getting to listen to uh, the previous speakers. Um, you guys are kind of a tough act to follow, so I'm glad you've got some dessert there, so maybe uh, be interested. So, um, uh, my dad and uncles um, started Jackson Brothers Feed and Seed in uh, March of 1983, and um, it was always interesting as I was growing up, I would listen to them talk about they always wanted to, they were in the corporate world working for, for different businesses, they'd all gone separate ways, and, but they always wanted to do something together. They grew up on a rural farm up in Knox County. And so they looked at a farm and, and some real estate and some different things, and then the feed store opportunity came along. And, and uh, so that was in 1983. So in um, 1991, we had an opportunity to purchase the feed store on South 11th and I was uh, 25 at the time so they sent me down there uh, to run it and um, and so we've grown along the way and I was thinking about um, Mike had uh, asked me to come and talk um, I said so we want me to talk about and he said well you know you've been in this family business for 30 some odd years so you've probably got some experience in relationships and um, I was reminded of a conversation that I'd had with a guy um, a few weeks back, and he said, so talk to me, what do you think would be one of your greatest strengths about your organization? And I said, well, it's a, we have a family business, so I mean, it's a, you know, there's a huge strength there. And he said, okay, so what would you describe uh, one of your biggest weaknesses about your organization? And I said, well, we have a family business. <laughs> And so it's, it's, not, it's not without challenge. Um, the, um, uh, I, was, I was looking at the, at, the, at the topic and managing long-term relationships, and, I'm, and uh, Mike had asked me, he said, so I'm, I'm going to send out information tell people about you. What's your official title? And I said, well, I said, because I, I don't like to use the word manage, I said, I guess I, guess I would be, I guess you would call me a manager, but it's, the, the downside to, to that word is like, well, how are you doing? Well, we're managing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I really, I really uh, prefer to be called a CEO because I feel like I fulfill the role of a chief encouragement officer a lot of times. <laughs> so, Good. Anyway, so we talk about um, managing long-term relationships. And like I said, that word managing to me is not a is not a uh, edifying word because it means that you're just basically getting by. So we might we might swap that word out in, in place of managing, and we're going to call it growing. And uh, talk about being a tough act to follow here. So I'm going to just do old school. I hope you guys don't mind um, me using this board up here. So I think growing would probably be a better way to to describe it. <clears throat> In growing relationships, so um, I heard a guy say one time, he said, if I'm, if I'm created in the image of my creator, then maybe one of my biggest responsibilities would be to create. So if we can create value, It's kind of like when you're in high school and you're in PE class and they're picking teams. I don't know about you guys, but I was—I never could understand why, but I was never one of the first ones to get picked. <laughs> so, but if we can create value, and we we um, then we make people want to maintain these relationships. So where are we going to create value? When the guys say, if you're gonna if you're gonna change the world, you got to start with yourself. I love the analogy uh, when you get on an airplane and the stewardess is standing up at the front, and she's giving the dem safety demonstrations and everything, and she goes, or he goes, um, we do not anticipate a sudden loss in cabin pressure. And my very first thought is. Well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> I hope you've got a plan in place if you do. And she says, if we experience one, there will be an oxygen mask that's going to fall down from a compartment up above your head, 
and then this is how you put it on. But the key that stands out to me is they say, if you've got somebody that's sitting beside you that needs help, make sure you put your own mask on first. So we want to create value in our in ourself first. So it starts it starts with it starts with us. So the three questions that um, you guys are going to find there is us as an individual. So maybe we could call that me. So what? What strengths and talents do you possess? Everybody has been created with seeds of greatness inside them. And, and the question is, what are your seeds of greatness? Uh, I like what Ryan was alluding to about you got to be yourself. And in our business, we have there's a lot of competition. There's more competition today than there's ever been. We started, like I said, in 1983. And we have competition everywhere. There's the big box stores and then anybody that sells our products. So how are we going to differentiate ourselves? And everywhere that we've tried to copy what our competition does, it's always mediocre. It's always second best. If you'll, if you'll set for yourself the standard that says, if we're not going to be the best at it, then I'm not going to do it, um, then you're always going to, that's the easiest way to differentiate yourself. If you're, if you're, I'm gonna make this statement too as well, I know it sounds kind of harsh, but if you're copying somebody else, you're committing suicide because you are supposed to be individual. So uh, one particular resource that I'm gonna point out uh, for helping you to identify uh, what your strengths are is uh, you can go to a website, strengthsfinder.com, and that's plural. And I have a little assessment there, and it's going to uh, help you find there's 34 different personalities that, that, that us as human beings exhibit, and they have identified uh, a, a process of, of helping you figure out what your top five are. And when you know what those are, then you can figure out how you're wired, and then you can get at a place where you um, are able to add to add or to create the most value and a lot of times that word create we might um, redefine it and say identified value because the value is already there um, so I uh, was uh, going through Facebook the other day and um, I saw a, a little deal uh, Aaron Watson a country music singer I uh, don't listen to a lot of music but um, he had this little video, I don't know if you guys saw it, where he's flipping the cards up. And he gave his story of the last 18 years of his life. And one thing that stood out to me, and I wrote it down, I was thinking about it today, say, we stay true to our brand. You know, the first thing that stood out to me, everything else he was given this timeline, this chronological, about, well, we did this, or this happened in this year, and did this album, or this child was born. But the line was, we stay true to our brand, and it wasn't past tense. Um, it was ongoing. It's like what we do. And I think in, the first thought was, well, isn't that interesting that uh, I wouldn't think that a country music singer would have, would have a brand per se. So let's look at that word brand, and if we were talking about livestock and agriculture, it would, be, it would be a mark. It would be identity. It would be ownership it would be non-changing and so when you find out who you are when you find out what your strength is then stay true to that and don't deviate from that uh, John Eldridge uh, wrote in the book um, Wild at Heart let the world feel the weight of who you are yeah. and then let them deal with it <laughs> mm, <that's good. laughs> so don't so don't back up from that um, let's see I made a lot of notes here and I didn't want to pass anything up so once we do this in ourselves and we get our and we get ourselves uh, find out who we are and, and operate within our strengths I'm reminded again of the parable of the talents and it was the individual that took the risk that exercised the talents that they had that the reward went to the one that held it back and wrapped it in napkin and put it on the shelf that was the one that, that missed out on the opportunity um okay so we do that in ourselves. 
and then we need to do it for those around us. So the second question is what strengths do those on your team possess? And so you go to them and you help them to find out who they are and how they're created and how they're wired. And the key is to get those people in the right seats on the bus in your organization. Um, okay. Then the third thing we talk about is vision. Mm -hmm. So what is the vision for your organization? Um, the, have you ever wondered why um, <coughs> ants and bees don't have to have a boss? And they don't have to be told what to do. And it's because they know what to do. And the way they know what to do is they all share the same DNA. So as we, as we uh, take our strengths and talents and then we identify the strengths and talents and the individuals on our team, and then we match that up with the vision, and we have to transfer our DNA over to them so that we all have the same DNA so that, you know, it's that deal. You know, what would Jesus do? Well, what would I do if my boss wasn't around? Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of deal. Wow. So... Um, does anybody know what the, the, the DNA, what the letters stand for in DNA? That's what I thought. Anyway. No, you're fine. So, we have, we have, we have a DNA in business as well, or in any organization. And the way that I remember DNA, we're going to change it up just a little bit. We're going to call it V N A. That's how we're going to pronounce it. And what this stands for, the DNA of a business is VNA. And the VNA is this it's the vision. My fifth grade English teacher wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to put a K right there so I make it correct so that you guys no, really doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Knowledge and, and approach. I'll take your class any day. So I was y'all got y'all got to meet Caleb earlier, my son. So we were talking one day and he said, Well, okay, so talk to me about vision. I said, vision is just what you what you see in the future, what, what God's revealing to you, what opportunities do you see, what, uh, uh, one thing I didn't write down earlier, that um, what, you know, they say in business, find a niche and fill it. I'm going to add a word and I'm going to say find your niche and fill it. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's vision. Knowledge is, is our experiences. Brian was talking about earlier <coughs> our experiences. And then approach, and he was like, Dad, I don't, I don't understand approach. What is, what, how, do you, how do you transfer approach? What does that mean? And I said, you know, on <coughs> Sunday afternoon, if I'm in my easy chair and I'm taking a nap, and you know that I'm in there sleeping and I'm kind of tired, and you come running into the room and you grab me by the feet and you start shaking and yell, Dad, Dad, Dad. And when I wake up and I'm not in a really accepting mood of that behavior, <laughs> he said, yeah. I said, you've got to change your approach. <laughs> nice. And we can't always assume that the people on our team know what our approach, what is the proper approach, and we gain a lot of that through knowledge. So um, that really kind of sums it up. I, there was one other thing that I ran across today in our went. I have devotion time, my wife and I do in the mornings, and, and to get our day started off right. And I ran across this, and I thought, well, that is really unique. Let me see if I can find it on my phone, and I'm going to share it with you guys. Fortunately, my 18-year-old daughter just redid my phone, and I have no idea <laughs> what any of my apps are, but I think, touch my phone. by grace, I found it. <laughs> the, uh, but, I, but I wanted to share this with you guys. Hopefully you'll get as much out of it as I did. Your life 
my life, the life of each one of us is going to serve as either a warning or an example. A warning of the consequences of neglect, self-pity, lack of direction and ambition, or an example of talent put to use, of discipline self-imposed, and of objectives clearly perceived and intensely pursued. So, you know, one of these days we're going to get to the end of our run here. Have we fulfilled the days that we was given by our Creator? And the question is, what are you going to tell Him that you did with what He gave you? Um, you know, we live in a, a fantastically free country, and we live at the at the extent of all of technological advances that we've ever seen. And we really had no excuses other than uh, just to get up and, and use what God has given us. So, mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys. Okay, take about two or three minutes.